Enron, a.k.a. the Wolf Brigade. Yeah, we're going there. Hey everybody, we just got back from Inram, uh, AKA The Wolf Brigade, Kim Ji Woon's new film. Uh, we went on, this is opening day in Korea, so we're not, we weren't really sure what to expect, but uh, had high hopes. You know what we're talking about. The trailer's been on the channel for a while, a lot of people saw it. Also, very happy to have our newest Movie Beat contributor here with us on this review. This is James. Welcome, James, to the Movie Beat. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm James, and I'm uh, the newest contributor to the Movie Beat, and we're going to be doing a review together for the first time, and hopefully you guys will be seeing more of me from, uh, from now on, and you guys might have caught uh, some reviews that I've posted on the site already, including one for Mandy recently, and Ant-Man the Wasp. So, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully with these uh, co-reviews, we can get a little bit more discussion. Right. Um, a lot of times when you're just like a single reviewer, you just kind of end up ranting, and I want to not really sure where things are going, bounce some ideas back and forth, so. Yeah, it's, it's always good to have someone to riff yeah. uh, with, so. And we're probably going to have some uh, spoiler-filled discussions in other videos, so um, keep an eye out for those, maybe some in case the discussion gets a little bit too long. But we really want to talk about uh, the movie today, Enron, also known as The Wolf Brigade. Right, and this, for those of you who don't know, this is actually based off of, it's an adaptation of a Japanese manga and a Japanese animation that was released back in 1998, I believe. The original manga was written by Mamoru Oshii and it was the animation as well was also written by him. Based off of the animation, uh, it's an adaptation, of course, live action from one of our favorite Korean right. directors, uh, you know, top five, he's probably on there. Absolutely, definitely one of my, my favorite directors. I mean, he's, Kim Ji-Woon is probably one of the directors that actually got me really into Korean cinema to begin with. And, um... Do you remember your first Kim Ji-Woon? Oh, it was Bittersweet Life. That was my first, yeah. Okay, so did you know who he was at that time? Not at the time. I actually, that actually made me go back and watch his other, uh, his other films after because I loved Bittersweet Life so much. And... But that's definitely Bittersweet Life and I Saw the Devil are two, probably two of my favorite uh, Korean films of you know, the past few decades. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I definitely had high expectations. Like, well, I, I try not to. I try to, you know, I, I mentioned this to you before. I try to temper my expectations as much as possible, especially because I wasn't a huge fan of this most recent film. This, Past film, Age, uh, The Age of Shadows, as it's known in um, other territories. Uh, it's called Nichang here in Korea. Yeah. And, and I, it was okay that. for me. I liked it, but it yeah. definitely was not on the same level as yeah some of his more like classics. Right. Right. Our Sweet Life, yeah. Yeah. Two Sisters, I Saw the Devil. Yeah. But still, you know, this is his ninth film. I think we're both very sorry to say right. that. Uh, Enron this was uh, might be another blemish on our favorite. It's hard to say. It's I really I, I'm so sorry and to say. I can this, say but, after because it's been about what like about, it's been about a good four hours since we've seen the movie now, and yeah. after having some time to process it and really digest it, I'm really I mean I'm liking it less and less the more I think about it, and I wasn't happy coming out of the theater. And I can easily say that this is by far his worst film to date. Like James said, is adapted from a Japanese manga or animation. Right, and the original anime is actually, it's regarded as one of the, it's highly regarded as one of the best anim animes of that era, um, the late 90s, I think that's 98 or 99, that, that's about when it was released. Uh, it's probably been over 10 years since I've watched it. And oh, we talked, we actually talked about, you know, Possibly rewatching the animation in order to sort of refresh our memories and 
whatnot. But uh, at the last minute, I decided against it because, you know, I want to go, I wanted to give this film uh, as fair of a chance as I possibly could. Because when it comes, I feel like when it comes to adaptations, it's, it's inherently difficult to like detach yourself from the original source material. Right. It's you know, unfair to judge right, based right. on the previous work. So mm -hmm. I do I am glad that we both did not rewatch this yeah. before going in. So we gave this movie every bit of a chance right. to take us. Right. And, trying to um, judge it based on purely based on its own merits and not trying to compare it to the original animation, you know, as okay. difficult as that might be that may be. Right, so um, from the original animation, uh, this version of the film obviously is a little bit different basically because it takes place in a different country. It is adapted for Korea. So you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, just to give a little bit of context, um, the original anime, uh, animation and the, the manga series, they take place in an alternate history timeline in the 1950s where Japan was actually conquered by Germany. So the way that that was recontextualized for a Korean setting was that this this film actually takes place in the future in 2029 I believe and instead of a German occupied Japan it's it take, it takes place in you know Korea where North and South Korea are on the verge of reunification so that's the basic um, setting shift and also uh, obviously the, the, like I mentioned, it takes place in the future as opposed to the past. Besides the, the change in setting, uh, I would say the core plot elements are pretty much the same, well, not exactly the same, but it, it's got the same look, it's right, got the right. same Visually feel. very similar. So this movie's gonna try to set up in this really complex structure of government and future, but it turns out it's really not all that important. We've got three different groups that you need to know about, just for the basic plot structure. Um, the first one is this, so we would view them as like a terrorist organization called The Sect. Right. And it's a kind of a fringe group, it doesn't seem like there's that many, but you know, when there's one terrorist, it, it causes a lot of problems. So it's a small underground group, they're just that are, they're basically, they're just against the whole reunification process and, you know, for reasons that are just kind of brushed over in the film. But yeah, so there's the sect, the, the terrorist group. Yeah, and because of their violence, you've got this uh, government organization that pops up. They call themselves with the Special Forces. Right. Um, so it looks like a decked yeah. out SWAT team. Uh, Pretty theory. much, they're just a, a you know a newly formed anti-terrorist, you know, government-sanctioned, you know, police force. Pretty much that are you know supposed to, like you said, like they're like SWAT kind of and cracking down, right, right, uh, trying to restore some sort right. of order in right. this chaos. And uh, with any political group, you're going to have some kind of opposition. Right. And uh, this. Uh, special Forces is politically aligned. They do have a direct line to, say, the presidents, we believe. So uh, you're going to have another group, you know, their rival mm -hmm. shows up and they're calling themselves the Public Security Division. Right, they're, yeah, that's what they're referred to in, in the film. And they're basically, you know, uh, an opposing political party or political organization that are basically, you know, they're trying to, they're scheming to dismantle the Special Forces group in order to, you know, um, establish their uh, presence in uh, you know, the political sphere. So... Sounds complex. Yeah. It's really it's, not. It's not as complex. One person wants yeah. power, the other person wants power, and then there's sort of in-between people right. that don't want either. They just want their own thing. So, um, our main guy, Kang dong Wan, he's on the Special Forces. He's a soldier. Should be noted. Jong Musung, another um, top billed actor in this, is his kind of superior training, training officer, training yeah. officer, chief training officer. So he's he's up, up the line um, a certain way. He comes into the story actually a bit later uh, than I expected. So and his part is a lot smaller than I expected too. Right. But important nonetheless. You will notice the actress. Everybody loves her, Han Hyoju, uh, the beauty, Korean beauty, she's in this. She is actually uh, 
without giving away too much about the movie, she's in the middle of, uh, of everything, and she gets involved in basically the two rival factions plot to destroy each other. She's sort of caught in the middle of everything, as well as Kang Dong Wan. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best way to put it without, you know, giving away anything. Right, and unfortunately, that's basically all this movie is. Mm -hmm. um, it's one person's plan against another person's plan, and they both think they're outsmarting each other. Uh, not a lot going for this movie. Yeah, this is a this was a rough one for me, Tyler, because um, like I said, I, I went in with an open mind and you know keep my expectations to a minimum, and really enjoy this film for what it is. And for me, like not as an adaptation, but I was going in. Even I, I tried to not let myself, you know, to not hype this up too much as like a Kim Ji film, you know, because especially like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't a big fan of this you know, his last film, so. So we want to set right. all of that aside right, right now. Um, let's, let's just forget that this is a Kim Ji mm -hmm. movie. Just let's just talk about this guy as a movie. Just as a movie, this is probably as mediocre, just middle of the road as you can get, and. I, I'm, I'm struggling right now to really find any, you know, any redeeming qualities about this film. Like, it's, it's, it's gonna be right. a struggle to really. um, This is a movie that, it is based on something, but mm -hmm. it also does not know what kind of movie it wants to be. Oh, for sure. This is a movie whose tone is all over the place, and you'll notice the shift, uh, at least the first main shift, when you hear the music, when Enya starts playing. Mm -hmm. And it goes from this political uh, espionage actioner to more of a made-for-TV romance drama at a point. Um, it's it just, I get what they were trying to do and establish the characters, but whoa, it, you, will, you will sigh deeply when you see some of these scenes. I think the best way to describe this film is generic. That's just, that's, you know... Like that's that's the most suitable term that I can come up with right now. It's just it's generic, generic on a lot of yeah, levels. It Let's is, talk about the action scenes. Just everything about it is so vanilla. Basically, when it comes to when it comes to big movies like this, we're looking for uh, a new page in the playbook of action scenes. Right. And when you get a movie that's big and it's anticipated and it's got a specific visual look to it. I want at least one memorable action scene, one creative moment of, whoa, that was awesome. Right, and I know for me there wasn't, like, there's not one action set piece that sticks out in my mind as being, like, you know, creative or original. Very just by the book. By, just straight by the numbers. I mean, it's it's cool to look at. I mean, like, you know, yeah. visually it's pleasing enough. I mean, It's better than looking at yeah, a Yeah, because you, you know, he, he knows how to shoot action. You know, we know that Kim Joon, uh, director Kim Joon, is capable of shooting action well. He's showcased that in Bittersweet Life. Um, there is that action scene in, uh, there's that one scene in I Saw the Devil where the, the camera is going around the inside of the taxi cab. Yeah, just yeah. creatively shot. Yeah. Uh, this movie was, the action scenes were, I don't even know if the director was on set for these things. It just doesn't feel like there's any stamp or signature of approval from really? um, you know some from someone who is writer director and has the the chops that we know he has yeah, it's really bland and inert and we've got potentially a location for one of the most memorable epic shootouts that has ever been in Korean film. Uh, not giving away any, any key right. plots, but there's a place in Korea that's kind of like the Space Needle of Seattle, <coughs> and um, it's called Namsan Tower, or Seoul Tower. Several of the film's key action sequences take place here, and oh, they- Wasted. They, wasted, absolutely yeah. wasted. I don't know what kind of restrictions or codes that they had to follow, but it really looks like they just, just blew it big time on this one. Yeah, and I think that's just a good way to describe like, you know, the, the entirety of this movie. It just everything just felt like a missed opportunity. Like even yeah. the fact that, you know, Kim Joon decided to adapt this uh, particular uh, source material. I, and I mentioned this to you before, before we went in, that my biggest fear was that this subject matter and this, you know, 
that this story was going to be dumbed down and it was just going to be end up becoming something more mainstream that's more consumable for a mainstream audience. Yeah, yeah the original was meant to be pretty heavy, wasn't it? Really heavy, really dark, really morose. It has like a, a, a very depressing message that still resonates with the audience though because it's so... because it is so dark but it's true well, at the same time, yeah. Uh, I feel like this this film just just it, it didn't have the balls to go there, right? You know, and it just kind of just whimpered out, mm -hmm. just fizzles out at the end. It's it's a real wasted opportunity, and uh, it makes me wonder why he decided to adapt this in the first place. If he wasn't really gonna go, I'm not saying that he should have followed the original animation or the manga to the to T. That's not what I'm saying at all. But it's like if you're not going to somewhat maintain the spirit of the original uh, the original story and get a similar message across I don't really see what the point is like I feel like he could have made this same movie not based on Jinro the Wolf Brigade right. and it would have been slapped a different title on it and you know with this same exact setting and it would have made no difference right for me right. the adaptation was an excuse to put them in cool costumes and have a, right. a sweet you know location premise for setting this uh, spy espionage action or in speaking of costumes that, that was also one of the gripes that you had right, right. It, and it's a it's a complaint that i have a lot mm -hmm. in any type of action superhero movie but the costumes look just right off the production line first time wear not a fingerprint on them right. just too polished not worn it at all uh, um, a lot of the set pieces feel like we're on set with the actors it just it has it, it misses the you know the to immerse you in the story. I just feel like we're watching the production. Yeah, I told I totally agree. Like everything was way it just looked way too clean. Yeah. Like very it's clean. I mean, it's to the point where it just looks plasticky. Mm -hmm. You know? Like I'm looking at an action figure as opposed to like a really well done, you know, costume. Right. Um uh, and just overall, this movie was kind of like um, if I had to describe how I felt in the end, it's it, this might sound really cool to you, but uh, think of all the worst aspects of this. Robocop meets Born Identity, <laughs> but Robocop Part 5 and Born Identity, the, the throwaway script that didn't make it, so... Right, it's like Robocop and Born Identity had an ugly baby together. Yeah, mutant love yeah, child, right. and it it's best way to describe it. just... Oof, it's best to look away, and uh, very it, hard to say, but... And it kills me to say this about a King Jae Moon film. Like what? Like I next? don't. If if I if no one had told me that this was a King Jae uh, a film directed by King Jae Moon, I would have no idea because there is seriously like he's a director that's well, so well known for his stylistic touch and like his you know his uh, unique way of you know filming and right. Love him or hate him, yeah. he's got a. Specific signature that he right. can stamp onto his films. And no, and you don't see that anywhere. That's nowhere to be found in this movie. This is one yeah. where I would want to take my name off, honestly, if I was him. But, yeah. you know, there's not much we can do. I'm hoping that this movie really is sort of a gut check for him right. uh, with the negative reaction that I am anticipating that will come mm -hmm. with this movie. And we're already starting to see a little see bit of it. Was not, and today's opening day. This was opening day. People yeah. are not happy coming out of this movie. Yeah. I can tell you that. Uh, there was a lot of Korean or Jamie episode, which means that was not fun. Uh, yeah. It just wasn't fun for us, for anyone there. Um, it was a bit of a bore. I was bored for most of the movie, to be honest. And yeah. that's just weird saying. I mean, it just the, the look. Look at this poster. This looks cool. Yeah, see, this, cool. this, like, if you were to see this, look at this poster, like, you would automatically think, oh, what a, you know, it's, it's got a really dark, brooding tone. I mean, it, it tries to go there, I guess, but it, it really doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't it doesn't commit to it. No. Not, like, no. No, it doesn't commit to it at all. And, and there's, there's some, there's some plot points in this movie that make you just, Oh, are they yeah, there's I, I oh, don't yeah, do that. I'm you, so cliche. Yeah, you Why you, you heard me audibly say, "Oh my god!" At one right. point, um, just there was a lot of looks yeah. at each other. Just oh. <laughs> yeah. a lot of uh, lots of uh, rolling, rolling, rolling of the eyes, and uh, 
but but yeah, like I was saying, I do hope that uh, if anything good comes from this movie, that Kim Ji Woon kind of uh, you know takes a smaller approach next time and just kind of does something more how he start from his roots. Yeah, you know, I, just get just be yourself. Yeah, I be really you. wish he'll go back to his edgy style of filmmaking. You know, not this this mainstream. I'm, I'm sorry, but this for me, this movie is garbage. Right. So <laughs> and, and just kind of, I'm just gonna say it. I'm, and I'm not gonna buy it. We did like, we did like, there's an actor, um... Yeah, Kim Muyeol. He plays the, the main antagonist in the film. Uh, he is the leader of the uh, rival um, organization called, you know, Public Security, the Public Security Division. And I would say he did a decent job, decent enough job as... He, right, I mean, I, I started to hate this guy, which means yeah, you're, you're his, doing a pretty good job at being, you know... His, act, his acting was on point. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he felt he felt like he was um, he did his thing. I would recommend this movie if you are a diehard fan of the actors. To no one. <laughs> for, that's what you meant. To no one. For the, if you if you absolutely want to see everything that these actors are in, or you're just really in love yeah. with them, yeah. of course you're gonna like it anyways. There's another actor in here. Yeah, you have uh, a lot of time on your hands. A lot of time on your hands. There's, there's just this is a movie of wasted opportunities, and overall, it's a very, very big disappointment, unfortunately, and it, pain, it pains us to say. And so, I, I would rate this movie maybe a, it's, I want to say it's average, but there's so many things in this movie that really missed, uh, like I'm gonna say it again, missed opportunity that it almost made it worse because right. it, this movie did not take advantage of everything that it had going for it so i would rate it about a 4.5 out of 10 and that is that is one of the lowest ratings that i've given um on the movie beat so i, I usually review movies that i really like and i want to share with you guys uh but this is one that i really need to let you know of course, you're probably going to see it anyways, but... Um, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and give this the exact same score that you gave it, 4.5. It's actually below average for me, and that's not, you know, based on this being an adaptation. I'm just, you know, just purely as a, as a film, uh, it's just not, it's just beyond mediocre. And I would never watch this again. I'm, I'll probably, by tomorrow, I probably won't even remember half of what happened in the, in the, uh, within the movie. When this comes down, it's out of my memory. Yeah. I'm moving on. This movie lacks enjoyment on almost every level. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have to give this one a pass. So right. uh, save your money. Mm -hmm. um, and let's look forward to some other cool movies that are coming out soon. Um, and we'll definitely be back before you know it with some other reviews. In the meantime, I want you guys to uh, check out uh, the review for Mandy. It just got posted the other day. Ooh, that was one of our favorites at Biffin, uh, the Buchan International Fantastic yeah. Film Festival this year. Nick Cage, Blood Soaked Acid Trip. It's 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 glorious. I mean, if there's yeah, you guys need it. And whenever uh, Mandy is uh, actually gets like a, you know a wide release, um, you guys need to check it out. If you're a fan of Nick Cage, uh, if you like horror, if you like art house films, this is yeah, this is just something you're gonna have to check check out because my mind was blown. So thanks for watching up until now and um, let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we really look forward to you know being back with some some more really cool movies in the future. Uh, Korean, English, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if we like it we're probably gonna want to share about it and yeah. you know even if we don't right like uh, we'll, today, we'll still have something to say right? about it yeah. But hopefully our next one together will be better than this one. Right, we're looking forward to the next uh, big Korean movie of the year. Still a lot of time left, so let's, uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. And until next time, keep watching movies. Bye guys.